G'day there guys, Hayden from Ham Radio DX again, wearing my Ham Radio Crash Course shirt today. You're probably like me and you have an absolute stack of projects to work on that are on the workbench at the moment. Well today in this video I decided that I want to share with you some of the projects that I'm working on at the moment, including the first one here on my vehicle. So there's a, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a number of projects happening at the moment, but I just wanted to go through, maybe start this as a series, a what's on the workbench type series. Um, so let me know if you enjoy it anyway. But Let's start off and I'll show you what I've been working on. This week at the VK7HH ham radio shack, I've been researching and trying to figure out why this antenna won't work on the top of my car. It is a little quarter wave, well, a loaded quarter wave width for two meters and it's two phased quarter waves for 70 centimeters. It sits on the middle of my roof, but it won't tune up. Um, if I put this antenna on a mag base which sits on this metal roof, it tunes up fine. But sitting on that base, in the middle of the roof, it does not tune up. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but the base is faulty. Well, not necessarily. Because the six meter vertical that I've got here on the front of the car, which is a quarter wave vertical, that tunes up. So, I'm not quite sure why that whip is not tuning up. And the reason why I want that is, is so currently on the front of my car, if we go around here, this antenna, which is a Diamond SG7500, I think, I wanna put a 10 meter vertical antenna, 10 meter mobile antenna on the front because I run the FT8900 in the car. So I've got a couple of diplexes in the car and I've got six on the front and I want 10 here and I want two and 70 in the middle of the roof. Let's, uh, I've got my analyzer here and I'll just show you what I mean. So we've got the MFJ269. I've got my handy RF parts adapter kit. Ooh, look at all those shiny adapters. Well, I'll show you what I mean as soon as I can find the right coax. I need a cameraman so I don't have to hold the camera and uh, the coax at the same time. All right, don't ask me why there's a BNC female on there. I terminated it a long time ago, probably just the adapters that I had at the time. So these, actually these, while I'm at it, these connectors, I don't know what this little screw in bit is, but uh, they screw in between the connectors and then you can make uh, N to, or N male to B and C male using these, these RF part connectors, they're really handy. I use them for repeater projects because I hated going to a repeater site and never having the right connector. Okay, so, connected. So this is the antenna that's currently on the roof, which is the two and 70 centimeter antenna. So if I turn on the analyzer, I would expect a dip here. Now, like I said, I don't have a mag base with me, so I can't show you on camera, but uh, it definitely works with a mag base. I've also got a friend that's got the exact same antenna on the middle of his roof, and that tunes up fine as well. See, there's no real, there's no real dip. So he's getting like a, and on the mag basin, and, and he's also getting a one-to-one -one SWA, he's getting a clear dip. See my dip's 2.3, 2.3 to one at 1.44. There's no one-to-one -one dip and going all the way up, there's no dip there. If I go to UHF just to confirm, so 4.20, our band 4.30, two to one at 4.50, but it's a one-to-one -one dip at 4.30 when it's working on the ma on the magnetic base, so that's not working. Just show you, I'll plug, I'll hook up the six meter antenna. So bearing in mind that the six meter antenna has been tuned on my front guard of the car, so it's not gonna be right on frequency. There's a dip there. And it's one-to-one -one on the front of the guard, but there's a dip at 55 megahertz, so I don't know, maybe it is a faulty base. Oh, by the way, here are the two antennas that I've got for 10 meters as well. So I've got the HF10FX, which is a diamond 29 megahertz antenna, and it's got a PL259 base. And I've also got a, just what we call a 27 megahertz skip whip, which is just, uh, it's just a 27 megahertz vertical uh, helical wound vertical which 
I've just cut for 29 megs. It's just got a standard 5 16 inch thread which uh, threads into that base on the roof. I've been, the weather's been against me so I haven't been able to take the base off. It, it could be the issue, I'm not sure. With the mag base the antenna gets raised off the roof a little bit so I'm wondering if that's affecting the tuning. But let me know in the comments anyway if you guys have an idea of what the problem might be. But for now I've got another base here which I'm going to put uh, on the roof once the weather clears up and I have a little bit of time. So that's project number one, let's move on to project number two. This is a frame for a 10 metre Moxon uh, antenna which I'm going to build. Now this Moxon is, it's made out of PVC, it's actually, well this is actually heavy duty conduit, um, 32 millimetre conduit, and I've actually got, if I just pop off the end here, which is very hard to do one handed, I've just got some thick dowel which just runs through the center there to uh, sort of give it a little bit more rigidity. I made up this little frame. So pretty much the idea is it's going to be a wire, uh, if you don't know what a Moxon is, so it's a two, it's a Moxon antenna is a two element beam which is which has the ends folded in for restricted space. So uh, so basically you've got your two, your ele one element runs from one end of the frame to the other and then it folds in here and then there's a little gap between that and then the next element which then goes around and folds in a rectangle and if it's a, the driven element obviously your coax attaches about here. Now this particular Moxon is going to be used for a 10 metre repeater which I've built. The 10 metre repeater is VK7RHF, it's on 29.680 megahertz. And the idea behind this is that as the solar cycle starts to peak in a couple of years time or over the next couple of years I'm going to have this on one of the receivers there's two receivers on this repeater one of the receivers is just going to be on a standard vertical antenna omnidirectional for locals locals VK locals and this antenna is hopefully going to be pointed towards the USA which is like I don't know roughly that way this is going to be on the and on the repeater and then hopefully that will pull in the US stations because I really really want to hear the United States using my repeater on 10 meters because uh, it's a band that I really really enjoy. Quick diversion, I know this video is about working on the workbench but I want to show you what I did recently do the other day. My 6 and 2 and 70 centimeter vertical at the new QTH which is a diamond uh, V2000 antenna. So there it is. Actually, if you own this antenna, this is this is a good tip to know. If you own this antenna, you see the six meter radial. There is a bit of a knoll in that direction, and also um, in the other, the completely opposite direction, 180 degrees from that radial. So if you are putting up this antenna, just keep that in mind that there is a. It's not completely omnidirectional. It is a little bit uh, skewed in one side. So yeah, I'll put that up, and I've run some. We call this Heliax, it's Andrew's LDF 450. Project number three is actually a repair project. It's not really a, well, it's not really a project, it's a repair. I just wanted to show you what it is. So this is a repeater. This is running, this is an, this is an all-star repeater. It's a voting and simulcasted repeater. I've done lots of videos on it before. But I just wanted to show you while it's out on the bench and how I've, I've set it up. I like experimenting and I like building things. Um, I built conventional repeaters before and this was a bit of a challenge so I wanted to to build this so pretty much this repeater it's actually it's GPS locked so this is a GPS over here 10 megahertz comes out of the GPS and NEMA data and all sorts of stuff this is just a this is just a standard radio which um, receiver exciter PA and this is this is basically the RF section of it this could be thought about as the controller so this board actually connects to an all-star node and there's a voting module in the node so there's a configuration file called voter.conf and that connects to this board and you can have you can have lots of different receivers all dotted around to have a basically one big coverage area one big coverage repeater and then you can also simulcast so you can transmit on the same frequency at the same time what's interesting about this board is i built this board from from just the plain PCB and then I got all the components and then I um, populated them all and this board in particular which is which is known as the voter board it took ages to put all of these components on so there's lots of like there's heaps of resistors little caps ICs I think each board probably took if I was if I was 
soldering all the time it would take a couple of a couple of hours at least maybe three or four hours maybe more and then what this is this is a uh, reference so this is a 9.6 uh, this board here uses a 9.6 megahertz reference to make sure that it's stable uh, so that the audios are all in sync so that the frequency doesn't drift so that's a oven control uh, oven controlled crystal oscillator and what this does this board takes 10 megahertz from the gps it then references it in here divides it down and basically there's a little voltage trim pot here and then i can get a stable 9.6 megahertz out because this does drift it does move a little bit so we need ultra ultra stable and keeps all the audios in check and then i've got a little um, voltage so i think this is a buck converter or a step up converter and what that does is it make sure that all the voltages are all the same and then there's an identical identical build rack mounted um, set up on another repeater side as this because you need every when you're working with voting and simulcasting you need all the audios and all the phasing all the same so that's what that's what this board does the issue with this one uh, i didn't know what the issue was the repeater just was not transmitting i went up to the repeater site I saw that it said it was transmitting, but it wasn't. I rebooted it a couple of times. I checked voltages. I couldn't find what the issue is. Dragged it all the way back here, and guess what? It worked. Murphy's Law, right? It always happens like that. I actually found out what the reason was is these repeaters um, use a fuse holder in here, and the fuse that I had had gone high resistance. So when it, when it was drawing current and it got hot and hot and hotter, there would be a high resistance joint and then current wouldn't be able to flow and then the voltage would sag and it would stop transmitting. And if you actually have a look on the back, you can see the track is actually burnt out and the board's all black at the, at the back of the PCB there. So what I ended up doing was <laughs> I did, I put an, I put it, yes, I put an automotive fuse in here um, and I just soldered it directly to the front of the PCB, which is undamaged. It works, don't quote me on why I used that, it was just in the box, so anyway, it works. So that was the problem with that and I've had this on test for the last week and a bit and it's actually transmitting now. Let's grab the radio. So um, yeah, hopefully I can get this off the desk and I can work on the next one. And in actual fact over here, this is a little, this is a receiver only. So same board, but just a receiver. So it's just mounted on top of the case there. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below, or if you have any ideas of why my mobile antenna won't tune on the car. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna replace that base. We'll see if that fixes the issue anyway. If you'd like to see any more videos on previous projects that I've done, then check out this video here. There'll be something that I've worked on over the years. 73 for now.